The next step of their journey is the Class A semifinal, a battle with number two New Life Academy at the Target Center, opening seconds. NLA on the board first. Coulter Stone gets the long pass and lays it up going out of bounds. Lions later tie at 6-6. Six, six. Tyson Grindy angling himself in midair gets the two over, the, over Stone, who's 6'4". SG playing good defense too as Caleb Griffin sinks the tray for the lead. 3-1 before halftime. Eagles go up 13-12 though. Austin Wolf in the paint. Eagles were thriving in transition, but so was Jackson Strinmoen. A team high 15 points as he calmly splashes a three. 18-18 out of halftime. Grindy knocks down a three of his own. But remember what I said about NOA's transition offense? They meant business with it. It takes all of six seconds for the Eagles to extend their lead. Spring Grove struggling to keep up. Wolf under the basket, 34-25. Even as Strinmoen continues to find a way upset the rim, the Eagles' 16-2 run proves decisive. It's all too much for the Lions to overcome. Lions stamped out by the Eagles 51-35 in the Class A semifinal. Now let's turn it on over to my good man Richard Denson for the postgame report. For one half, the Spring Grove defense was as good as advertised. They created turnovers, flew around, stifled New Life Academy. But on offense, they were just a tad hesitant. They seemed like they could have turned it up a notch. Still, it was anyone's ball game as it was tied at 18 at half. But in the second half, things just changed. You know, maybe, you know, we might have got a little worn down in that second half. And I think it affect us, affected our mental approach to what we were trying to do. And we kind of went off script and stopped trusting our execution. We got a little passive and we needed to be more aggressive and, and they took advantage of that. Bottom line, for as well as Spring Grove played on defense, eventually you must hit shots on offense. Today, they just couldn't get anything to fall. You know, they just had us off. I mean, we, we, missed, we missed open layups, open court layups that we normally make. I think it's because we maybe heard footsteps, you know, and we were over striding instead of just fundamentally going up and making a layup. Uh, when that happens, it's, it's really difficult against a good team like that. And we, we missed easy baskets and then they did contest us. Uh, they were long, they put their long defenders out on Tyson and Elijah and, and that, that changed a lot of their shot opportunities. And when we did catch for an open shot, we just seemed like we weren't shot ready enough to, to let it fly. We got lost maybe some of our confidence in our, in our shooting ability. But the Lions are not done out here in the Twin Cities. They will look to rebound and finish on the podium as they take on Cherry in the third place game. It's as good of a get right game as one can hope. We're just going to do it for the seniors. I mean, we got one one last run together as a group. I mean, we showed up what we play together in football and we're just going to go out there and give it our best and leave everything out there because it'll be our last game. I mean, only what, 12, 12 teams get to end the season on a win and we're, we're going to be one of those 12. It won't be easy. Cherry has a heck of a score in Isaac Asuma, a future Minnesota gopher. So it'll be an interesting irresistible force versus immovable object battle. The Lions may be done here at Target Center, but as you heard them say, they are in control of their narrative and finishing the story the right way. Tip-off will be tomorrow morning at 10 at Concordia University. From Target Center, Richard Denson with ABC6 Sports. A, B, see you later.